psychological highs. Yes. Frequently whilst on a high, Ali has taken to see the director of the pool mission, Roger Kay. He's always keen to sell her more courses. She's already spent £250 and claims to have little money left. Right. Kay's recommending Ali should be audited for another 20 hours and do more courses, costing another £2,000. These sessions are often late at night. Do you feel more confident about the future and what you want to do and that kind of thing? So, and that pr improves your memory? Yes, that's one of the things it mm. does. There's other things too. With that. And even after the centre closes, the hard sell continues. At the end of this lengthy session, so long that the batteries in her camera had run out, Ali makes a revelation. I threw in a line that I had a disinheritance in Australia and he became very interested in that. Um, he didn't push me, but he slowly tried to find out ways how I could get that money, how he, I could fax the bank, how I could get it quickly. Uh, even though I assured him I could get it in a couple of weeks, that wasn't soon enough for him. Another day, another registrar, another form, and another tactic. Ali needs to move her car as her two-hour parking ticket is about to expire. I've got to get a new ticket for my um, car in the car park. The Scientologist insists on accompanying her. Ali's rarely left alone, even to go to the toilet, and she's escorted from office to office. It's a deliberate ploy, according to former staff member Stuart Boot. The idea was that you weren't going to let them leave, because often you found if people had a moment or two to think, the chances are they'd, they'd leave or want to, want to change their mind about the money they'd paid in for a course, which was often quite high. Stuart Boot was fifth in command at Pool Mission until November last year. He attended many late night meetings to decide which clients to hit financially. It would become uh, a money orientated thing that you were looked at as to how many services that we could get out of you uh, and how much money we could milk you for. Nuclear physicist Adam Bird was milked for £34,000. He went to the Scientologists for help with dyslexia, but ended up borrowing from various different banks to buy courses. Then several Scientologists came to lodge with him to help with the hefty interest payments. During this event, they took over my life. I had not intended to put lodges in my house. I now had lodges in my house with Scientologists, one of whom was quite high up in their command structure. To help pay again, another one of them had loaned my car and was supposedly paying me rent for it. I then didn't have any means of transport. In America, Flo Conway and Jim Siegelman have been studying cults for the past 20 years. Their new research, which is about to be published, finds that Scientology has the worst long-term effects. Among Scientologists in particular, people who come out of this group report to us very high levels of amnesia, memory loss, of insomnia, of disorientation, of hallucinations and delusions, of perceptions of bewildering psychic experiences that will plague them. And in some instances, we've cataloged for up to 12 years years after they leave the group. Leaving Scientology was a traumatic experience for Gary Fry. Now married with a child, two years ago it was his mother's distress that broke through the Scientologist's control over his life. The last straw was when my mum broke down into tears in front of me and um, basically startled with her emotions, startled me back into reality and what I was really doing in Scientology, what I was following. Successful legal action secured the return of the £21,000 he'd paid them, but it was much harder to recover his mental health, though he says becoming a Christian helped. It took me two months of uh, real trauma in trying to leave it, um, and I went through times of, of suicidal depression to times when I, I, just, I was just so depressed, I just couldn't believe it, I couldn't understand what had happened to me, I couldn't understand what Scientology was all about. While she was at Pool Mission, Ali kept hearing about this place, Saint Hill. This is where Scientology is controlled from in the UK. It's also the home of the Sea Organization, the dedicated elite core of the Church of Scientology. Ali's next task is to get inside what's regarded as the Holy of Holies amongst devotees of Scientology. Saint Hill Manor is just outside East Grinstead in Sussex. Ron Hubbard lived here until 1966. Ali is taken to the castle built in the grounds. This is where Scientology courses are taught, right up to the highest levels. Okay. 
I went to St. Hill just to look at the home of L. Ron Hubbard and within an hour I was taken into the recruiter's office and I was asked if I wanted to join the Sea Organisation. Mm -hmm. Here it's just like very dedicated and that's all you do, right? Like you get burrows and fed and... Right. It certainly is dedicated. The recruiting officer fails to mention that Ali will be required to sign this billion-year contract if she joins. But she does explain that clearing the planet is a very big task. Our purpose is really big because obviously to clear Earth, you know, um, and it takes a long, long time, right? Mm. I mean, we're talking about five billion people on this planet. Yeah. Former Scientologist John Atak has collected an enormous archive on the bizarre system of beliefs that Ron Hubbard invented. Clearing the planet means taking everyone up to the secret OT or operating Thetan levels. It can cost Scientologists around £20,000 to discover these inner mysteries. Once you've paid an enormous amount of money and signed a covenant of secrecy and you get onto the third OT level, you're told that a galactic prince called Xenu um, some 75 million years ago rounded up the populations of 76 planets averaging 178 billion per planet and brought them to Earth and clustered them together um, using hydrogen bombs having dumped them in volcanoes. The spirits of these exiles or Phaetons as Hubbard called them on release from the volcanoes attach themselves to human beings. Here's one of them on the cover of one of his many books. Scientologists who are doing OT levels come to believe that they're inhabited by thousands of little alien spirits, extraterrestrial spirits, and they're basically seeking to exorcise these spirits which are governing their behaviour and reactions. Meanwhile, the Sea Organisation are determined to find out everything they can about Ali. She has to answer some very personal questions. I had to list all of my sexual partners, everything I did with them, how many times, very, very detailed information. And I queried that because I was quite upset about that and they said it was um, there to help me. Scientology keeps records on everything its recruits reveal. This information has been used to silence former members. I've yet to meet anybody who hasn't done something embarrassing in their life. And Scientology will inevitably find out about it. Anything that hasn't been found out, or anything sexual that you've done that could be considered reprehensible. So the organization does have a tremendous power over former members. When inside St. Hill, Ali saw a document about Scientology's chief critic, John Atak. She put the document in her bag to read in the privacy of the toilet, meaning to put it back later. But unknown to Ali, the Scientologists were secretly filming her, secretly filming them. They called the police. When I was arrested, it happened very suddenly. Um, I found myself being taken out of the, the castle by the police. And all of a sudden, all sorts of Sea Org members I'd never seen before, older ones who were quite scary looking, quite sinister, came out of the woodwork. And um, three or four of them were taking photographs or video footage of me. It, it was bizarre. Um, everyone was lining the corridors as I was walking out. Uh, looking at me and as soon as I gave them eye contact they'd look away from me like I was evil or something. It was an amazing experience. We wanted representatives of Scientology to appear in this program but conditions for an interview could not be agreed. Scientology does not approve of open discussion of its beliefs. It calls journalists suppressive people and believes them to be irredeemably evil. Ron Hubbard devised a special policy to deal with these perceived enemies of Scientology. It allows them to do anything to deter, discredit or destroy their critics. Journalist Russell Miller faced months of harassment as his biography of Hubbard neared publication. Firstly, they kept informing the police that I was responsible for various crimes. And so the police would show up at my doorstep, want to know where I was on such and such a day. The first crime was the murder of um, someone in a pub in South London. And um, they had f solid evidence that I was responsible for that, or so they thought. After fighting countless lawsuits against Scientology, leading critic John Atak went bankrupt in May. He's been harassed by them since 1983. I've been followed by private detectives. Private detectives have sought to interrogate my family, my wife's family. If you just write down a list of the worst possible things you can say about somebody, I've been accused of those things. 
not just in whispering campaigns, but in print. Scientology vigorously defends its freedom of belief, saying it improves life in a troubled world. But evidence is accumulating that it's one of the most destructive cults. Scientologists who have come out of their group have reported some of the highest instances of suicidal and self-destructive tendencies afterwards. And many of them have told us that when they were in the group, they were warned that if they left Scientology, they would commit suicide within six months. Uh, many of them left with enormous fear. John Buchanan was a Scottish landscape gardener who worked in Germany. Three years ago, John became involved in Scientology at the Munich mission. He piled up huge debts with several German banks to buy Scientology courses and materials. Last November, to escape his debts, he committed suicide. He left a final note for his mother, Mary MacDonald. He explained that he believed that he would come back to life and return to Scotland. For Scientology had taught John Buchanan to believe in reincarnation. It definitely said that he was going to be reincarnated and come back in another life or another form, which obviously something that I'd, he was never brought up to, to believe in and I just didn't know that he, he did believe in things like that. John Buchanan did return to Scotland to be buried in this village churchyard in the Trossachs. When he died, among his few possessions were the Scientology books, tapes and equipment that had cost him thousands of pounds. I feel that if it wasn't for Scientology, he'd probably still be here.